We are excited to bring on Mayor Jean Stothert. We love having her in the studio with us just to talk about all of the things going on in Omaha. But today with the mayor, we're going to focus on the urban core for a lot of good reasons. But first of all, Mayor, welcome back. Thank you. You just reminded me it's been a year since I've been on this show, so that's too long. I know. We would much rather have you way more frequently, but I think with schedules, all of a sudden, next thing you know, a whole mm-hmm. year has gone by. But we have a lot to talk about. We have to jam a year's worth of stuff in to today, so there's lots going on. Well, let's have you on this summer so we don't have to wait so long. There then. we go. There we go. Because we'll have a lot of updates this summer. So given all that, You've been busy lately? Oh, yeah. We've been so (laughs) busy. And there's so many good things that we've been talking about. But, you know, when we... We want to concentrate on the the urban core, I think, this morning. And the urban core is an area that we defined several years ago. And it basically runs coming to Leavenworth and then 10th Street all the way to Saddle Creek. So that's defined as our urban core. And we had the urban core committee that was developed. And we gave them a task of looking at all things related to urban core. So that would be business, that would be infrastructure, roads, Uh, walkability, you know, um, uh, residential, all of those things. And and to make sure that what was happening down there was all coordinated and worked together. And so we were more than thrilled to be able to announce just just recently um, the, the plan to build Mutual of Omaha's new tower downtown at the Dale Clark Library site and that to move forward with the modern streetcar. And so that is just kind of, that was a recommendation out of this Urban Core Committee, the streetcar was. But Mutual of Omaha is something that we've been working on for some time. And so, so exciting to talk about that. But I I just want to mention right off the bat that when we talk about uh, why now for the streetcar, I know a lot of people are saying you've been talking about it for years. I remember I talked about it when I first ran for mayor. Why now? But when you look at all of this going on downtown, I kind of look at it as there's two bookends. You know, what the going on in, with the riverfront and the luminarium on the east side, that's a $400 million project. And then you go all the way to UNMC to Project Next, which is a $2.5 billion at project. Least. And then you look at everything in between. And those are the two bookends. But you look at the Mercantile, which is ConAgra's, that's $500 million. Millwork is $300 million north of the ballpark. Um, you look at the Blackstone, the Capital District was $200 million. Um, Civic Auditorium site, that's going to be a $150 million project. All of those things in between those two bookends, this is what the streetcar is going to connect. And that's why it's so important now, because I think we all know that parking downtown is choking development. And if these things continue and we want all of these to work together and be successful, that streetcar is critical. And it's free to the and riders. It, yeah, to the riders. It's going to cost a lot to build it, that's for sure, and to operate and maintain it. But it, the way it works is it's free for the riders. And so the one thing I said many years ago is that, and remember when I ran for my second term, that was a big issue, the streetcar. And at that time, the roads were just exploding. They were in terrible condition. That winter of 19 was terrible. And I said two things, basically. And, and one is we got to fix our roads first. You can't build a streetcar on a road full of a roads full of potholes. Got to fix the streets first. And secondly, I don't want to raise taxes to pay for it. So if somebody could give me a finance plan on how to pay for this streetcar without raising taxes, I'm in because I understood the value all along. And so we did pass, you know, in the May of 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, a $200 million street bond issue. And I think people see the work going on everywhere. We're, we're doing, seeing the results of that. And, and yes. I, I don't see a lot of potholes, I can tell you that. Well, we've had a mild winter last year and so far, knock on wood. But we're doing twice as much road work now as we did before. And the Urban Core Committee presented a plan to me of how to finance the streetcar without raising taxes. And so now is the time to do it. And then with, with the new Con, not ConAgra, Mutual of Omaha building, you know, they were looking at multiple sites. And they're going to stay in Omaha. And what what a good community partner they are. But we thought that's where they belonged, right at the end of that new Gene Leahy Mall. That's going to be the Omaha skyline now and in the future. And um, they were looking at the old Wall Street Tower site or the old UP site downtown. They were looking at that site. But they needed the streetcar. You know, they have 4,000 employees. They were going to build about a 2,500-car garage. But they needed the streetcar to move people in and out if they were going to be downtown. And they asked us, could you, could you do a, another loop of the streetcar and bring it around where that UP site was? And after we really got to thinking about it, it was two of the, the, the my two deputy chief of staff, Kevin Anderson and Troy Anderson, both came up with, well, why don't we bring 
the streetcar to Mutual and do it by by putting Mutual where the Dale Clark Library is, where that streetcar was already going to be. And we thought, what a fantastic idea. So we presented that idea to them, and they loved it. So um, let's talk a little bit about that, because I want to come back to the the building itself, Mm -hmm. because that's pretty exciting. But let's uh, stay on the streetcar issue, Mayor, and, and, and can you give us a brief overview, without getting too far in the weeds on it, how the financing will happen with that unique, or at least unique to Omaha, uh, financing system that is going to be proposed and hopefully approved. Right. And and it, it, is, it is unique, but it does work. And, you know, right now there's about 46 U.S. cities that are currently planning or already have streetcars. And research shows that in every community with a streetcar, development has outperformed the estimates. And so we know that there will be a lot of development that will happen along that, that streetcar line, which we look at as three blocks either side of the, where the rails will be. And so what we have, have come up with as far as a funding plan is one using TIF, tax increment financing, and there's three different types of TIF. So with existing TIF projects, and those are TIF projects within three blocks of the rails that have already been approved and are already moving forward right now, we are going to expand that repayment of that TIF note from 15 years to 20 years. We can do that. And, and we could do that in areas that are already deemed extremely blighted. And that was changed in state law, a constitutional change, several years ago. And with doing that, expanding that from 15 to 20 years, we can capture that additional funding. And that should bring in about $50 million. The second type of TIF would be new TIF projects. And that would include Mutual of Omaha as a new TIF project. They, would, they wouldn't have this TIF note expanded, but they would be new. And any new TIF projects within three blocks of the rails, they would donate 25% of their TIF proceeds to the streetcar. That should bring in about $218 million. And then the third is a TIF district. And that is basically capturing the increased value of properties within the three block area of those rails. And that should bring in about 86 million. So you add those up together, that TIF is expected to generate about $350 million. The cost of the streetcar, we're, we're using the cost, we're talking a cost of $306 million, so that's less than that than the three hundred and fifty. But that has a 35% contingency, which is huge. So the actual cost of the streetcar is about $225 million. So the actual cost of construction, $225 million. The three TIF districts should bring in $350 million. So that's more than to pay for the construction. And for the operation of it? And the operation and maintenance is another thing. And what we will use is what we would consider or we talk about is our total mobility plan. And that this streetcar will be the next phase of that. And a total mobility plan is a combination of streetcar, bus, BRT, cars, pedestrians, scooters, bikes, all those things together. But, but the point is, is this whole system will provide free and easy mobility in, out, and around our urban core. But to pay for the operation and maintenance, that total mobility system will pay for it. And what we can do with those extra TIF dollars is we will pay off our garages, our parking garages, because we have debt service to that. And then the revenue that comes from our parking garages and our meters will go to pay for the operation and maintenance. So it's all part of that mobility system. And we would, we would include our garages and our parking meters in part of that system. But when we pay the debt off, the annual revenue that we make from that system, particularly the garages and the meters, will pay for operation and maintenance. And and if you want proof that these things work, you can look at the line in, in Kansas City, which doesn't even connect as many exciting um, venues as the Omaha one will. And then the other uh, item of proof I, I present to people would be the BRT on Dodge. Yes. I mean, the BRT is not rails in the concrete. Less rapid transit. Uh, yeah. yeah. But nevertheless, if you look at it, uh, the number of five-story uh, buildings that are popping up along the Dodge Quarter because of that is pretty impressive. Absolutely. And, and you know, people say, well, nobody rides at BRT. I hear that all the time. And that's really not true. Now, with COVID, we did have a, a real down tech on our buses, on the BRT, on our airplanes at our airport. You know, you're not going to shut the air, our airport down because of COVID that people weren't flying as much. But it's picking up and it's performing um more than they expected it to, actually, the BRT. So that is picking up, too. So it's just part of that 
total mobility system that we think is so critical for downtown and urban core development. Well, what I think is neat about the streetcar, too, is that the, the empl- there's so many employees of Mutual of Omaha that live around their current campus, and they can they can take the streetcar to the new camp- the new building. Yes. And then also that huge area that's going to be repurposed and redeveloped, some of those buildings will, probably will likely be reused. That opens up huge opportunities for other businesses and, and, and other opportunities for residential right. and commercial. And that's on the streetcar line, too. Yeah. And that that's why I say Mutual is such a good community partner, because the one thing I was worried about if they moved, what would happen to Midtown? Yeah. Uh, because they are, they are Midtown, and, you know, they want to repurpose those buildings. They have interested parties in those buildings already, and they're going to make sure that Midtown stays lively, too. So it's a, it's a, it's just a great thing that that all this is happening and we could announce it together gene um one more thing about the streetcar um it's kind of a two-part question the timeline uh, what what needs to to play out between now and when we actually have people riding these things mm-hmm. and number two can you give us an idea about support on the city council or mm-hmm. or or how that process would work because we have to make sure obviously it goes through the city council and, and that we have a favorable vote yes absolutely and it has to go not only through the city council but the planning board and so there's there's a lot we have established a timeline and basically the timeline for the streetcar is design would be in 22 and 23 so that's this year and next year construction 23 to 25 and plan to be open in 2026. And that is when the plan for Mutual, their new building, to be open in 2026. So it kind of all is happening at the same time. But it's an aggressive plan, but that's what it is. I have briefed the council myself. Um, The council is is supportive of it. Of course, they want to know more of the details. And as we know the details, we will give them all the details. But, But it's pretty aggressive. So February 16th, uh, which has already passed, the TIF committee, March 2nd, should go to the planning board. This is the redevelopment plans for the streetcar. Um, In March would be the first reading for the redevelopment plans with the city council. Uh, They'll have a public hearing in April. And and all those things will be available, and public will know the exact dates. Um, The first reading for the redevelopment agreement and operating agreement would be in April. And then the city council would have a public hearing in May. And then May 10th should be a vote. And that's primary election day, May 10th. Wow. What do you know? That's fast. Lots, lots of voting going on that day. But, you know, I mean, it, it'll have to move very quickly because one thing is ordering the street cars themselves mm. and ordering those. It takes about two years for them, those to come in. So and, and the other thing is that I think is important here is so we talk about these proceeds, proceeds from TIF. Well, these come in over years and years and years. You know, the development hasn't occurred yet. We know it will. So the big question is, how do we get the money right now? for construction and how do we not have the taxpayers pay for it. So it will be a combination of what we would call uh, special revenue bonds and private placement bonds. And the thing with private placement bonds is there is definitely a market locally and nationally for them. And the thing about these is the buyers of the bonds assume the risk, not the city. So people say to me, well, wonder if that development doesn't happen around the streetcar line. Um, The bonds that we are using to construct it, it doesn't go back on the taxpayers. It goes back on who buys the private placement bonds. And so there's a lot of private investors that will buy these bonds. So it doesn't go back on the the city of Omaha. And that's that's why this plan will work without raising taxes. All right. Well, let's talk about the skyscraper because yeah. uh, what Trent and I always like to uh, uh, say, and half jokingly but mostly serious, the biggest piece of red meat that Grow Omaha listeners want to eat are new skyscrapers, mm-hmm. but they don't happen every day. No, no they don't. Um, so, so mutual CEO James Blackledge and you did that press conference together, and uh, we know that it's going to be a very, very tall building. But people are dying to know. Do we have any insight just how t- how tall that thing might be and when Mutual might let us know? Yeah, and, you know, they, they had that preliminary design that they showed. And, you know, I would say it's around 45 to 50-story building. Um, it could be taller than the First National Bank building. Um, their floor plate is, is, is taller than First Nationals because the HVAC systems are different than they will be for First Nationals. They're under the floor. So the floor plates yeah, are, are different than they were before. So it could have less stories but still be taller. So the, the, the 
the plan isn't to be, I will have a taller building than First <laughs> National Bank. That's not the plan. But the plan is to build a building that is going to work for Mutual of Omaha now and in, into the future. Now, their plan, and people have asked this a lot too, it isn't to lease out part of that building or have tenants. That building will be all of Mutual of Omaha. And they are they are still, you know, we, we are planning on developing the block east of where the Dale Clark Library site is, which is now part of the Gene Leahy Mall, because the Gene Leahy Mall will go all the way down to the river and take in, you know, Heartland of America Park. So it's that's a where lot a lot of, of the construction equipment is. Lots now. Li- where all the construction equipment is now, and where will be a staging area when Mutual builds. But you know, Mutual may even look at that area east of there in the future for expansion, and so there's a lot of potential in that area. But they don't know exactly what what the the you know the height of that building will be but i will tell you it'll look like the renderings that we have seen and when we see a picture of omaha in the future after 2026 this is what you're going to see you're going to see that beautiful new gene Leahy mall and then you're going to see this big new skyscraper there and you're going to see the name omaha right there which i think is great <coughs> Yeah, a convenient name of a company yes, for that building. And the future, absolutely. And the, the tallest building right now, uh, First National First National Bank, is, is 40 stories of, of occupied space and then 45 stories with all the mechanical on top mm-hmm. of it. Inside the crown. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we're only getting started. We have a whole bunch of other questions we want to ask the mayor. And so stay with us. We're going to take our middle of the show break for the news. Then when we come back, we're going to talk with Mayor Stothert about the timeline with moving the library and and getting construction started for for the mutual tower and other downtown and urban core issues so this is going to be fun stay with us you're listening to grow omaha brought to you by nai np dodge and dnm roofing on news radio 1110 kfab all right we have mayor gene stothert with us and uh, we're talking about the urban core and and projects that are happening down in the urban core area and and Mayor, we're very excited about that skyscraper and all that, but we've got to uh, wait uh, for construction to start until after the W. Dale Clark Library moves a few blocks to the south. Can you kind of give us an update about how that process is going and sure. what needs to happen? Sure. And, you know, I mean, this is the first step to, to relocate the Dale Clark Library we announced just at the end of November, and it's moving very, very quickly. And so, you know, I, I have to say first, though, that the move implements recommendations for the Dale Clark that were made 10 years ago. This is nothing rushed. This is nothing that we're doing quickly without a lot of thought. In 2010 and then again in 2017, a consultant reviewed the Dale Clark Public Library and they recommended um, to replace the Dale Clark. Um, in their master plan, they described the Dale Clark as dated and inefficient and underutilized, and it was very costly to operate. So we knew we were going to move it anyway. But once the mall is done, the Gene Leahy Mall, we know that site for development is really, really important. And now we know it's going to be Mutual of Omaha. So anyway, we have to move very fast with this right now. And it's something that, again, we've been planning for quite a while. But we're going to put requests for bids out um, and they'll be issued in March for the demo of the Dale Clark Library. Um, we plan, we want it to be demoed in September, uh, and so that we can have it cleared by the end of the year. That site should be cleared by the end of the year. Um, the work is progressing to design the new downtown branch to 1401 Jones, um, and the administrative offices then, will, which are now located at the Dale Clark, will move to the Shopco, old Shopco site at 84th and Frederick. And so that's where distribution and the administrative offices will be. Heritage Surfaces, um, you know, they are working with Margaret Sullivan on a national, who's a national library consultant, um, on public engagement. And they're working um, as far as the other library that we've been talking about at 72nd and Dodge. And so that's, that's the one that Heritage is working on. But what Heritage is working on at 72nd and Dodge is not related to the Dale Clark. I mean, this is there. It's a, still our library system, our Omaha Public Library system, but they're not related. Um, and that so, would be the main, though, at Seventy Second. They they technically call it the main library. They're, they're they're actually not calling it the main. They're calling it the central okay. because it will be different than it was before. Because central distribution for right now, you know, will be at Eighty Fourth and Frederick. Um, the uh, every bit every material that is now at the Dale Clark will be available still for patrons to see, to use, to check out. 
all the materials that are there at the Dale Clark as far as the daily things that people want to check out, they will move to 1401 Jones, but major dis- or the, the main part of distribution will move to 84th and Frederick and the administrative offices, central distribution. So there isn't anything that's available at the Dale Clark now that won't be available in the, in the future. It just will be in a different site, maybe temporarily. Now with that 1401 Jones, it's a 10-year lease. We have an option of a five-year out on it. Um, it will be redesigned. It is exactly what this consultant that the library staff had, had hired in the past and studied and recommended. It's exactly what they wanted. They wanted 30,000 square feet. They wanted easy access to it. It's only a few blocks from where the Dale Clark is now. But we are still open as time goes on to looking to see if there's a better site or maybe even build a brand new library downtown. But to get it moved now so Mutual could move on, this is just a perfect spot. And I have to say, we looked at almost every spot you could think of downtown. There isn't a lot that fits the needs of what that library consultant said in 2010 and 2017. Plus the the city can buy it if it turns out to be the perfect site. The city can exercise their option to purchase it. Absolutely, we can. And, you know, the library staff is even telling us, that even if we would build a brand new downtown library, they like the idea of moving to 1401 Jones for now to say to figure out what they do need and what the patrons say they need downtown. And this may be the perfect spot, or they may say, mm, we feel like it needs to be in a little bit different location. So it gives us a lot more options. But the point is, is we want the, the continuation of services not to be disrupt, disrupted at all. And that's why it's so important that we move along with this quickly and so that there will still be use of a downtown library, that we won't have to close one down and not be able to open another one up as, you know, soon. Uh, Mayor, you, you talked a little bit ago about the uh, unique plan of swapping the W. Dale Clark site with um, uh, the Lanaha-owned right. former Union Pacific headquarters site. So, so eventually, here pretty soon, the city's going to own that site. We're going to own that site again. Here we go again with that, that, that site <laughs> downtown. Site. Right. So what are we looking at long well, term for that site? And, you know, that's, that's, that's we used to call it the old um, Wall UP. Street Tower site, but it yeah. is the old UP site down there. Jason Lanaha owns that property. He was working with Mutual. He was going to be their developer, and that's the site they were looking at first. But, but to make this all work, we felt like it would be, make a lot of sense just to do, since we own the Dale Clark site, to do a land swap. We will give them the Dale Clark Library site. We will take over that, that old UP site. We don't have a recent appraisal, but we are getting one now, and we feel like they will be very similar. Probably the Dale Clark would be worth a little bit more, but we'll see. They might be very similar in cost. So then we will get back that site, the old UP site, and we will do an RFP. And what we want is something down there, obviously, that'll bring in tax revenue, that'll bring in revenue for the city. So, you know, somebody said to me, well, put a new police station there or a fire station there or a city or a a city. Then it's underutilizing that spot because then you're not going to generate any revenue for the city. And so we're looking for something mixed use or we're looking for something that is is more of, of an office space down there that will bring in tax revenue and look beautiful well and that site's it's that site's begging for a fairly tall to very tall building are there any companies out there without saying names that might still be interested in a decent sized tall building downtown yes yes there is and and i love that answer yes and i think i i mentioned before that we had about a half dozen interested in the dale clark site Uh, a lot of those people that that we have talked to we're, we're trying to see if what they want to do still and would they be interested in that site and there is a lot of interest in that old up site what, <clears throat> ahead, one John. of the things that jeff and i have been waiting for and we've talked about on the, over the 18 years the show's been on the air is a, a full service grocery store downtown you know hy has been rumored to to look at some buildings mm-hmm. down there and stuff and but it'd be great to have a fifty thousand or plus square foot grocery store down there are we ready for it or or do we still need to grow the the population down there? No, we're ready for it now. You know, they always and, and I can't even tell you what the exact um, formula is, but it, it's so many residential areas or so many residential spots that would then require a grocery store. And we have surpassed that now because there's there's a lot of residential popping up all over downtown, as you know. And so we're ready for a downtown grocery store. And in some of these projects that we are looking at, 
um, they are looking at a downtown grocery store. Civic Auditorium side would be great for that. Well, Civic Auditorium yeah. side is and one. And it's funny you say it because we, we have less than a minute left, but I did want to throw the Civic site out there. Gene, what's the latest with that? You know, I mean, we have a plan. We announced that several White months Lotus. ago. White Lotus is doing that. It'll be mixed use. It'll be mostly residential. There will be some workforce housing there also, but it's a perfect spot for it with its proximity to Creighton and then also Central High. And so that will be, that's an odd spot. You know, it's not downtown, but it does have easy access to get on and off. And so what we have planned for that area, I think, is just perfect right now. Plus that garage is already there, too, the parking garage. Which is a huge asset. Which is a city-owned garage. That's four blocks square. That's a big site there. And so um, the development, the plan, there's one corner of it, the southeast corner, that is still not really planned because they're looking at some sort of civic component there. But still, the plans are there and moving forward with that. Very exciting. Well, this, uh, I wish we could keep going, but uh, we're running out of time. So let's do this maybe in the summer. Have you come back for an update? Yeah, maybe we could do it after the Gene Leahy Mall opens July 1st. And, yeah. And well, talk I, about all sorts of things happening around that area. I just might talk to your staff and get that on the schedule. Let's right do now. it. Okay. All right. Well, Mayor, thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks we, for having me. We always appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.